Hello, friends from the comic and manga world. My name is Hector. And my name is G. And we're here to talk to you about our picks for August 15th, 2022 FOC. Now, for those of you who don't know, G and I work for Penguin Random House, and we manage sales into the direct market around the world. So the titles that we're going to talk about today are from you know the imprints and publishers that we can sell into those markets. We also want to invite you to follow us uh, on our social media, uh, not just this YouTube channel where this video lives, but also we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook under PRH International Comics. So without further ado, let's get started with the list. So the first pick is my pick. Uh, this is My Aunt is a Monster, graphic novel by Raymond uh, G. And this is from Random House Graphics. And it, com it, it will be available in both hardcover and in trade paperback. And first, I want to talk about a little bit about Raymond uh, G, who is an illustrator who was born in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and now lives in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And she has done a lot of work, work uh, won awards, but she also did an amazing thing. She created this um, this collective for a, a Southeast Asian artist called Unnamed, and it's just a place for artists from Southeast Asia to get together and collaborate. Um, so if you have a chance, check that out. And now the story of this book, um, Safia, who's the girl that you see there who's blind because you see her with a stick, um, it's a it's a little girl that has always wanted to have adventures and she lives adventures through listening to audiobooks and um but she hardly goes anywhere but then she meets this very strange and distant aunt um gosh i forget the name of the aunt but the one that you see there with the hat and she takes her on adventures and the adventures turn into a little bit dangerous adventures because then uh, the aunt is being um, followed and uh, at sort of uh, persecuted. Or, yeah, it's like he's running away from some bad people. So it gives uh, Safia not only the chance to live out her fantasy of going to other countries and other places, but also to have an amazing adventure too with her aunt. Uh, I think on the next slide we have uh, some of the interior art I love this story. I love the 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 art. We were commenting that there are some similarities on the art design to some animated shows, and I think she worked in some in those animated shows, so maybe they, there's a little bit of influence there. Um, but it sounds like it's just a fun adventure, a little bit of magic, obviously, and story but with a lot of heart and with um something that we've seen a lot recently is uh which i love is having protagonists uh are people with disabilities who are showing that you know the disabilities don't um you know necessarily keep them from being the protagonist of a story which is great next up Next up is my pick, which is Donuts and Doom by Blaise uh, Lorenz, and this goes on sale September 20th, and this is uh, published by Top Shelf. And this is a story about Margot, who is a witch and keeps failing at an exam to get her spell license mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to live uh, and survive the real world. Um, she tries to uh, build this business with um, potions and selling potions. And it's not going very well, and she's having a hard time. And so to cheer herself up, she tries to go seek out some chocolate donuts. And so mm -hmm. she she goes to a donut shop. It makes shop. total sense to me. I mean, Yeah, that you know. makes sense. You yeah. just need a little pick-me-up. Pick pick-me-up, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Margot goes to the donut shop and a series of circumstances happens, does not end up getting the donut and <laughs> accidentally curses an employee by oh. mistake. And the employee is um, Elena, who is this punk rock musician. And not only does this curse, it, 
become an issue, but they have sparks are like tension between these two. They seem to like each other. And so it's just basically the story of trying to get past that curse and cure it. And a romance that happens between these two. So uh, the interior images here is beautiful. Um, I love when artists do this, that they limit the color palette so it's just in pastel blue and pink and i like that because you, you can see how they play like in this circumstance like the pink is used sparingly so you can see when that happens um it's very beautiful i definitely recommend checking out this creator's other artwork it's stunning um He's definitely a fanboy <laughs> yeah. of, of other um, fandoms out there. So it's great to see uh, the, the type of work that he's doing. So, mm -hmm. right. And then next. Yes, um, next from IDW. Yeah. Both right. of us are going to talk about this one. Yeah. But once yeah, you get started. <laughs> yeah, I can get started on this. This is a Crashing, uh, written by Matthew Klein. And you'll see the variant A cover here by Beam. Now, Crashing is a five issue limited series and it's part of IDW original. Um, and so this is third in the line of the original. So um, uh, in, in this particular story, we have a doctor, Dr. Rose Osler, who is an, a recovering addict and is constantly struggling with that every single day. Um, as a doctor, she is one out of a few physicians who can actually treat superpowered beings. Um, but she works at a hospital that is doesn't look favorably upon superpowered beings. But for her as a doctor, she'll treat anyone that needs help. Um, and then you follow her story as it's um, Matthew Klein did a, a video, um, highly recommend uh, checking out his Twitter as well, talking about uh, this, 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 this title. Um, but basically, what was very interesting to me is that he wanted to write a story about first responders who also need help. Uh, like, for instance, this doctor who is whose main job is to save lives, and yet there are times where she needs she needs help and she doesn't know how to get it at times. Um, what I find really interesting about this story is as you're reading it, um, I'm trying to describe it in a way that makes sense because I am. Uh, so envision this, you're, you're reading the dialogue and you see bubbles for people yeah. in conversation, but the internal dialogue is written as um, like notebook paper, like spiraled notebook paper, and it's kind of like ripped, which is interesting because you, when you're reading it, the internal dialogue is happening currently. Like yeah. as you're watching events unfold, it's happening at that moment in time. But because it's on a notebook paper, you kind of think that maybe it's also reflective uh, of as course. in terms yeah. of like how the speech bubble is portrayed there it's a really cool concept the way that they have like something as subtle as the difference between how the speech bubbles are displayed is like mm -hmm. that subtle difference that does make um that the, it does contribute to the story which is really cool yeah and it kind of it kind of feels like because it's reflective obviously you you get more insight into the story and that's why you're getting more insight into the story but also you feel like you're just uh, the narrator is just having a flashback of the story, which is great. I like that kind of device, and um, it sounds like on this book, it works really well, which is great. Yeah, and if you'll notice, they make use of color really interestingly as well, mm -hmm. because yeah. there there is this one scene, I don't want to reveal too much, because you should go out and, and watch <laughs> yeah. it, but like, I just want to show you how like you really should discover the gems in this um, particular title, but like, someone hands her like a bottle of pills because she's like incredibly tired the coffee machine is out and she looks at it and as a recovering addict that's like that temptation right there yeah. and the pills are like colored blue so she's looking at the 
pill and you can see her reflection in the pill and then it flashes back in the next panel to a scene where she was younger and how she got into drugs but the way that the the scene is portrayed is in a shade of blue it's the same shade as the pill so i'm like that's such a good way yeah. to portray it so the art the art here is unique and very cool um i would say yeah. very mm -hmm. cool i think do we have interiors no uh, we don't have interiors to show but um, we do have other oh sorry covers. you have varying covers that's yeah, what yeah, we yeah. have mm -hmm. so this uh, is very and interesting and i love the 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 one on the left like uh obviously also corona or corona um it's very reminiscent of a spider-man yeah. but also it's like she's just falling yeah it, it's it's also yeah and it's it's sort of if it's kind of an image that makes you think yeah that she's sort of falling deep into trouble which mm -hmm. is great and then the other one on the right uh by kanga's uh very beautiful and also she's trapped in the pill and then and, and sort of images of probably some of the some of the issues that are we're gonna f you know find throughout the story which is great mm -hmm. yeah looking forward to that one definitely yeah Ashi. for sure and now we're going to continue with some of our favorite uh covers for comic books this on um, this foc and the first one is my pick and this is usagi yonimbo number 31 and we have momoko and she has two retailer incentive variants a one in 10 uh and a one in 25 which is the sketch version of the first one and you see usagi and it's just uh, it's just a amazing image a uh, very, I don't want to say simple, but straightforward is what I want to say. But with all the, uh, you know, all the details and the beauty that Momoko gives to all her art. Um, I really love this this image. And uh, gosh, I need to get this one. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Definitely. I like to see sketch variants because I'm like, it looks yeah. like something that I could do, but I cannot. Of <laughs> like, course, I would not of be course. They make, it, they make it seem so easy, obviously. Yeah, it's like because they're so skilled and they're, I'm, I'm sure she was able to do that sketch very quickly. <laughs> of course. But then I mean, she we don't want to minimize and... her, the, her art is just that we know she's, and I've seen, and if you go to her Instagram, she, once in a while, she will show you, you know, process videos and it is. It is like she does it so, so quickly, so seamlessly. It is so, oh my God. It's like magic. It's just, a, it's, it's just a sketch, but like obviously yeah, it takes yeah. more time afterwards when you, um, of course, when you add more to it. But, but there is yeah. also a lot of detail into that sketch, uh, mm -hmm. which is very amazing too. Ah, so good. Next up. Next up is my pick. Uh, this is, um, the Judgment Day issue number four. This is uh, the Chrissy Zulo cat variant. Cat variant, yeah. Which I really love. And representative of each, we have Thor um, with Avengers. Um, and then we have Storm with the X-Men and then uh, Cersei with the Eternals. I just love, I just love this a lot. Yeah. It's cool. It's a cool concept. And I think they chose a really good artist to I mean I don't know what came first the concept or like they just said uh Chrissy Zulu come in and do this and um well, Zulu came up with I, this I, I guess you know she has done cat covers before I mean she did Hellcat and obviously that made sense to have Iron, sense. Iron Man and, and <laughs> Hellcat as cats but uh she has done a couple of uh cat variants before mm -hmm. so I think it comes from her but uh yeah, they probably said, yeah, we wanted that, but for Judgment Day, can you do it, please? <laughs> I hope that they, like, make it a thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I think, other I think cat so. variants, just, yes. like, use it as a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, also how it is very beautiful. They look very serious. And they, I mean, they could look very silly, but they don't because also the background and her, you know, I don't know, the detail that she put into this makes it not seem very silly um it which is amazing and it's I mean, also like if they do an animated show with characters like this i would definitely watch it 
This I was is just awesome. gonna say that. Like I would totally <laughs> watch this uh yeah. if they if they did it. So Yeah. Or even as a comic book, obviously, too. Next up, Midnight Suns, uh, number one. Uh, this is Kevin Eastman's variant, and one in 25, obviously homage to the Ninja Turtles. Uh, and you have here Ghost Rider and, and Wolverine just jumping in front of the Red Moon. Uh, or, as, well, actually, it's a sun, I guess, because it's Midnight Suns. So it's a sun in, in, at night, I guess. Uh, very beautiful, very, I mean, it's very Kevin Eastman uh, cover. And not much to say t about it. It's just uh, very beautiful. And I, as as a fan of the Ninja Turtles also, I, I really appreciate this cover. Mm -hmm. Next up is uh, Captain Marvel issue number 41. This is uh, by Johnson. This is a Beyond Amazing Spider-Man variant, so it feeds into the 60th anniversary mm -hmm. um, of Spider-Man. And uh, this is a great cover. I just yeah. I just love the heart hands. Yeah. And then um, uh, you'll have, like, uh, MJ here, a Black Cat, Gwen Stacy, uh, Betty Brent, and Aunt May, and then Madam Web. Uh, which Madam Web is getting um, her own movie from Sony uh, that's uh, been yeah. on the news. Yeah. yeah, with Dakota Johnson playing the character. Mm -hmm, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool. I just like this concept a lot. Yeah. It's, it's cool. This is right up there with the selfie covers that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I love this kind of thing. It's awesome. Yeah. And next is my cover of my pick, not my cover. I wish it was my cover. Amazing Spider-Man 9 by uh, Leonardo Romero, Community Variant. Now, I realize I automatically assume this is uh, May Parker, but it might be somebody else. So I'm not sure, 100%. I, uh, it could be also uh, one of the new characters coming out uh, the, out of the Edge of Spider-Verse. I'm not 100% sure. I think it is May Parker. Um, and maybe somebody can correct me on the comments. But um, yeah, but this is a beautiful art, piece of art. It's a beautiful, it's just such a spider person pose. And she's really enjoying swinging, which is the one thing that I always uh, loved. Like as a kid, looking at Spider Man, that's the one thing. Like if you if you think about Superman, you want to be Superman because you want to fly. If you want to be Spider Man, it's because you want to swing <laughs> all across town. Um, and this kind of shows that, but it's also very beautiful. And I love how it's a lot of red but it's it plays very well with the with the different tones of red and the shades and the shadows and it's very beautiful uh next up is miss marvel and venom issue number one this is the momoko variant as always momoko stunning yeah this is like a really small detail but like I don't know I like how her signature looks like it's part of the saliva that's, Wait, where that's, is the signature? Um, oh, now bottom, I see it. it yeah. yeah. It's like, it blends well with the, yeah. that's such a weird detail. I didn't even notice it. Yeah, I like the, I like it. Yeah. That's all I it, have to it, say. Like yeah, it. no, and then, and then Momoko, I mean, she, everything she does to me, it's amazing and it's great. But um, I think she also stands out a lot when it is an element of horror in which if you look at all her other art aside from the comic book. If you go to her side, you see that she's a fan of horror. So uh, I love how this has just Miss Marvel standing there very innocently, but this horrifying mouth of venom <laughs> around her. It's just awesome. It's really yeah, cool. it's like Miss Marvel, um, it's ve she's very calm <laughs> yeah, in such a situation calm. and like, yeah. She knows which, and up. she still keeps a very beautiful hairdo, which I also uh, like, you know, like wavy <laughs> yeah. hair and you can see the wind blowing through it. But mm -hmm. still, yeah, very calm. <laughs> and the next one is my pick. It's Daredevil 3, the Alex Malief variant, 1 in 25. I think I uh, picked Alex Malief 
uh, covers all the time because <laughs> I, I I think his art is so good. Um, you should follow him also on Instagram because he has a lot of beautiful art in there. And this image, um, I mean, it's just a very typical. Again, when you think about a uh, a superhero, you think about how fun it is to be a superhero. In this case, it's being Daredevil and Electra just running through the rooftops of New York. Uh, through laundry, <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. through laundry hanging on the on the clothesline, um, but it it also plays a, really well with the reds, and but still gives it some of that um, amazing. Um, I, I like the pinks and the whites in the background. At first, I thought the white uh, shirts or sheets were were doves, and I think that's intentional too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a very beautiful piece of art. Looks like a painting. A painting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, all, well, I'm not going to say all, but most of his uh, covers look like paintings. Mm -hmm. And he gave it that that sort of uh, painting look to it, mm -hmm. which is great. I texture, also did, texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also did want to mention that I really also like the main cover. Um, so mm -hmm. on the next slide, we have the main cover yeah. here uh, by Chichetto. I don't know, it's so gruesome yeah <laughs> I like, it. like this weird um puppet master well like yeah he's a controlling uh daredevil with this dripping the, blood coming out of i his was gonna say so the, the strings are blood <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's so cool i really dig this cover yeah, as well very so, cool yeah mm -hmm. and then that's it for our picks, but then this is uh, an announcement we make always at the end. And in this case, is Deadpool getting a new series in November, Deadpool number one. I, I'm i excited also. It's Deadpool, which I love, but also because I'm such a big fan of uh, Lisa Wong and her work, and she's re writing this um, this series. And, and the art and cover, is, uh, and this cover, is by Martin uh, Coccolo. Um, I love Elisa Wong. I've read many things by Elisa Wong, but especially her Dr. Afra. It's amazing. And I highly recommend it. I always recommend amazing. Star Wars, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that if you, I don't know if you can see, uh, the bubble, read it, but it says literal enough for you. That's so cool. It's floating on a sea of dead and maybe passed out. Also bodies, a sea of body. <laughs> on a floaty yeah. <laughs> yeah which is very very Deadpool thing to do uh -huh. okay and that's it for this week thank you so much for watching this video we hope you enjoyed it and we really quickly want to mention that any of the opinions that Z and I made during this video are solely our opinions and in no way reflect the opinions of Penguin Random House its imprints or its um, distribution distribution clients um, we hope that you can come back. Like I said, go to our social media and follow us on uh, PRH Comic International on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and also on this channel. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye, everyone.